What's up guys, I'm Jacob, this is Benny. On this episode, we put Greg and Ellie's Jayco Caravan to full air suspension. Then we take our rigs on an epic adventure to the Glasshouse Mountains, get stuck into some glamping out bush, head over to Noosa for a beach camp and show you all the features and benefits along the way. Welcome to Bag Builds. It's a shame you didn't come this time, Benny. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'll bring you a little trusty stuntman along with me. Greg and Ellie are about to get the bag bills treatment. We are going to be installing our bolt-in OE grade full air suspension to their Jayco Journey Outback. If you have a Jayco Caravan with a Mark 1 or Mark 2 JTEC independent suspension, then this is the system for you. What are you doing, bro? Special delivery. Whilst I'm sweating absolute buckets here at the Airbag Man HQ and looking like a woolly mammoth, I am going to give you a quick run through on what you actually get in your Jayco full air suspension conversion kit. To kick things off, we've got the heavy duty rolling sleeve Firestone airbags with the airbag mounting brackets. Now this is a bolt in solution, nice and easy with the install, no drilling or fabricating required. Onto the onboard air supply system, this is a modular enclosure which is going to house the ECU, the valve block and the German built AMK compressor. We've also got a lightweight three gallon aluminium air tank. It's got the SAE J10 approval, which is an approval you need to have in the automotive and industrial applications and the industry in general. Now for this little beauty, this is the handheld controller. This is an auto leveling system with three preset heights and you can activate those heights by this handheld controller. You've got your raised height, your drive height, and your lowered height. You've also got manual controls as well, which will run you through throughout the episode. There is an add-on feature to this handheld, which we've got on the controller. It is the horizon leveling button. Now, if you go to a campsite and it's uneven ground with your caravan, all you have to do is hit that button and your caravan will level out You'll have a flat bed to sleep on and you can cook on a nice level playing field. That's pretty much it for the system. Now for all you ladies wondering out there, this bike is not included. You'll have to ask Ellie on that one. Let's get into the install. Sweating my knackers off and I ain't even doing anything. Yeah, it's How's a bit it warm in here. Yeah, good. Just um, the ASU mount? Yeah, just assembling everything on it. So they've got the ECU and then the um, valve block's just going to go on the side of the mount here. And then we've got our compressor with its isolator mounts and so it's going to be day. mounted into it, yeah. And then strapped up against the camper on this side here. Yeah, nice. And then yeah. you get stuck into it. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff, mate. Stuck Loving it. it. No worries. <laughs> For a streamlined installation, we need to pre-assemble all the major components ready to bolt them in underneath the van. Wow. 
Now that Trent has finished building our ASU module, it's time to get stuck in and install the tank and module. We're using our universal chassis mount brackets and we're gonna secure these to the cross members. This system takes up to three days for an airbag man specialist to install. However, if you're doing it yourself, please ensure that all safety equipment is used and safety standards are met. You may be wondering why are we mounting all the major components underneath the van with all the elements? Benny, why is that? Well, the AMK compressor has an IP rating of 68, which means it can be temporarily submerged in water and is well protected from any dust. We're now up to the next part of this build, installing the airbags. I'm gonna get started and build the airbag assemblies, then get back under the van, removing coil springs, ready to bolt them in. One down. Always clean your undercarriage. As opposed to your conventional steel tanks, we are using our lightweight aluminium air tanks. There's more mounting capabilities, plus you save 25% on steel construction. And saving weight is crucial with any recreational vehicle. These airbags have been specced to maximize the Jayco's wheel travel in on and off-road scenarios. I can't wait to see these things flex. Instead of using a conventional jack to lift the van, we're using our world-renowned Selsun Air Jacks for quick and easy push of a button adjustment. We stock the full range here in Australia with serviceable parts where required and with lift capacities up to 7 tonne.
If you don't have a Jayco, don't stress. We have been doing this for years and have retrofit kits to suit most caravans on the market. After all, in the mid 90s, we put the first caravan on full air suspension in the world. Yes, we did. The airbags are in place ready for fastening and the major air supply components are bolted in. It's now time to move on to the speed sensing. This is an awesome add-on to the system, however, we will show you this in action later on in the episode, so stay tuned for that. Benny boy, so how have you found the install so far since I've been MIA once again? Well, as you know, I'm not a fan of working on the ground. I much prefer a hoist, but it's just a blessing that we have such a great team which design and manufacture exceptional bolt-in airbag kits. And on the plus side, there's plenty of room under this van. Beauty. Now for the wiring, the height sensors, and to calibrate the three preset heights. Here we go, moment of truth. It's all wired up. Let's turn the isolator switch on and see if it works. Oh, I just heard something. Yes, it works. It's alive, Benny. So when you go through the hard graft to installing this kit, is this the most satisfying part? I reckon it is. The amount of effort we put into developing these systems, and once they get going, that feeling never gets old. And so good. go height sensor brackets are all installed now it's time to move on to the height sensor and install the lower linkage mount and linkage rod The 
light sensors are the last piece of the puzzle. Now that they're installed, it's time to refer to the installation instructions for the height settings to calibrate the system. Greg and Ellie have optioned in our plug and play horizon leveling module. If you have optioned this into your ECAS system, we program this prior to sending your kit out. Although if you do want it later on down the track, you can get this done with our assistance or via one of our airbag man specialists. I'm enjoying the comfort of Greg and Ellie's master bedroom with this awesome bed here. I'm going to give you a quick run through on what Benny and Trent have actually calibrated with the handheld controller. They've used the PC tool for this one to calibrate the system, but you can use the handheld that we supply in the kit with comprehensive step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. He's set up the raised height, the drive height, and the lowered height, and he's also activated the horizon leveling. You don't have to activate the manual controls, that's all straight out of the box. That being said, let's go and show you all the features and benefits on a trip away, bush and beach. I might have a sleep as well, actually, because I am done, because I've done all the work here, eh, Benny? Done all the install work. What was that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just, just flicked the switch there, please. Huh? Just flick the switch off for me. What's that? We would just like to say a massive thank you to everyone supporting the channel. Make sure you drop a like and a comment on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Unfortunately, just like Jacob was MIA for the install, I was MIA for the trip, which I'm absolutely devastated about. Unlucky, unlucky. First feature of the trip is drive mode. This is your everyday setting for on and off-road use. This will also give you optimum ride quality and stability throughout your journey. What are you um, excited for today, mate? Oh yeah. Glass house. Came for that hike that you really wanted to go on? Nah, no, no, not keen. Yeah, okay. Guys, we're just about to hit location one the glass house mountain lookout so from there we'll be able to go through some awesome scenic trails and get some epic views of the glass house mountains and i reckon we'll be able to see these airbags flex around over these ruts and might even chuck it in high mode just just to um test out the departure angles if there is a, a decent rut there but i'm keen for you guys to see these airbags in action yeah mate, as it's uh, our first trip up here, like so we're we're keen for the sights but also um just to see how this uh how the big rig um tows now. Just looking at it in the side mirrors here, it looks unreal. Keen as. I think we're about to get a pretty specky view. <laughs> Oh,
Whilst you get to see these airbags articulate in their element, this trail is a must when scoping out the 27 million year old glasshouse mountains in your four wheel drive. We have taken this van to a pretty extreme off-road destination, somewhere where you don't normally see a van. We did notice some tail scraping in drive mode in a couple of the deeper ruts. This next hill looked pretty steep, so they had to activate high mode for more body clearance, allowing for a better approach and departure angle. If we didn't have high mode, we may have been in a little bit of strife. quite a decent rut for the off-road van there but if it didn't have that raised mode in the air suspension there she might have got hung up a bit yeah all we got away with is just a little bit of plastic that came off the rear bar on the van but apart from that it was it was good and that's what you want So Benny, what do you reckon to that bit of a play there, in the ruts? Yeah, nice. Oh, we're going to hit this puddle now, so you got anything to say about that or? Hmm. Alright, let's go. So we're just making our way out of Glass House. Um, had an, an absolutely epic morning of um, tackling the tracks, testing the suspension out. And um, my God, I'm impressed. Have a look at this little mountain here. This one's Mount Gungun in 
and you can see this little ridge up the top here you can actually climb right up to the top there on that little perch obviously don't jump off the cliff but there are some sick views up there it is awesome yeah i could imagine it's um looks mint from down here yeah it's gonna be good so we'll probably have a bit of a feed now a few snacks for lunch and then go and hike up i think it's about 30 minutes i've done it probably six or seven times i should know the time by now but yeah it's about 30 minutes so keen as yeah let's do it what's uh what's on the menu for for jacob oh mate i've got brie cheese how about that with some crackers and like just all sorts of stuff it's gonna be good 300 so good this mountain is by far the easiest hike out of all the mountains and you get awesome panoramic views of the surrounding mountains close by. Now from Ellie's research, this mountain is commonly known as Mount Gun Gun, but the actual pronunciation is Mount Nunu. Good old awning, eh? Greg and Ellie are just having a quick feed over there. I'm gonna do the same. And then we're gonna hike up this mountain called Mountain Gun Gun. Awesome views up there. I'm pretty excited, so I reckon I can do it in thongs. I reckon. La, 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 la. It looks like you guys had that mountain all to yourselves. Sure did. And I'd say the best time to go is sunrise or sunset. It's now time to head on over to Cobb & Co in Gympie, have a bit of relaxation. Greg and Ellie are gonna live it up in their luxury van and I booked myself a sick glamping tent. guys I have checked in to Cobb and Co campgrounds this place looks pretty sick I wish I brought the family along how good does it look it looks very uh, family orientated stacks for the kids to do yeah such an awesome joint so I will um, set up camp and chill out for the rest of the evening eh yeah let's do it and uh, hope the weather stays as good as, good as it's been all day yeah boy let's do it an absolute magical night sleep in that glamping tent it was awesome now i'm getting stuck into the coffees oh also you've got a great shower facility over there as well which was pretty unreal hey fellas did not disappoint <laughs> so get stuck into the coffees i'm just testing out the new 
little inverter that I've got in the Jeep. So we'll see if this bad boy runs it. Hopefully it does, because I've spent a fair bit of coin on it. Ready to go to beach peeps? Absolutely, let's go. Game. All right, so I've showed you a lot of features so far, the yep. high mode, the drive mode, and now we're gonna get stuck into the speed sensing. Right, Any no idea what that is? Mate, right. um, <laughs> I'm keen to see. Yeah, cool. Yep. So we'll pretty much just leave it in low mode at the moment. We'll forget yep. about it, and yep. then we'll get in the car, and once you start moving and you get over 20 kilometers an hour, okay. this system will register that, and it will automatically bring you back up to its drive height. That's, yeah, wow. That's awesome. all you got to do. So if you forget about the height that yep. you're in, it's just going to automatically bring you up to its position that it needs to be when you're driving. That's perfect. So let's do that's it. Good. Let's do it. And then beach. And then beach. Yeah. How good is speed sensing when the system basically thinks for you? So good. We also had the opportunity to activate raised height through a dip in the road. This is a more common scenario for your everyday caravaner. Cobb Co is an awesome place for families. The facilities are class. People are fantastic. Swimming areas, all types of accommodation for camping, glamping, and even gypsy cabins. This place is a must stay when visiting the Gympie region. Now that we've had a bit of fun at the Cobb & Co glamping joint, which was pretty cool, what do you guys reckon to it? I reckon it was excellent. Um, keen to get back with the family. So much for the kids to do. And um, the kids being entertained means we have a good time. That's it, they'll have a ball there, I reckon. All right, so I reckon we head off to Tawantan, get a few supplies, and then hit the beach trails. Yeah, sounds awesome, let's do it. I'm so keen man. Yeah, we're just about to hit the entrance. I'm just gonna pull over and quickly just check my tires to make sure they're all down. But um, yeah, I'm absolutely keen to get on the beach. Eh? It looks like the weather is holding up nicely. What do you reckon, Benny? Yeah, good chat, Benny. Good chat, mate. All right, I'll check my tires and we'll get into it. That is so calm out there.
Greg just saw it as we were driving. These little bulges just sticking up out the sand. So we might have a fish, the Sabo, for tomorrow morning. This is gonna be great. What a lovely afternoon here at camp. Unfortunately, we've got some uneven ground. So what a perfect opportunity to activate the horizon leveling feature. No more chocks for this van. If you didn't option for the horizon leveling module, the system still comes standard with manual mode on the handheld which will allow the operator to manually adjust and level out the van. All right, so we've made it to camp, starting to set up. Um, we've got the awning out, but it's time now to level the van up. And here is the man to show us the uh, final stage of how our bag build happens. <laughs> Are you keen for it? Mate, I'm so keen. I'm sick of falling off the bed. <laughs> I guess the real question is, before you had the airbags, how did you level this out? What was the process? Mate, so right about now would be where I'm looking around for the biggest rocks I can find. <laughs> and then and then we do like back and forward, back and forward, yep. under the wheels, a yeah, bit nice. of a brain hemorrhage. And then you've got the legs just to drop them down, just to lock it all in the place. Once, once we get it semi-level, then we drop those down just so that we don't fall off those rocks. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Alrighty, so this beautiful looking handheld controller. Yep. So currently you're in drive mode. Yes. This is how you arrived here in. Yep. Perfect. Now we're on this un uneven surface campground. There's a bit of a tilt here. So all we have to do is hit this horizon leveling button. So okay. to do that, click and hold. Wait till it starts to flash, which you'll see. Yep. There you go. So that flashing is indicating that this uh, van is unlevel. Once it has stopped and it's nice and green, that's when it can stop leveling it out and we're nice and level. Once that's done, you can drop your legs, lock it in place, and yep. away you go. That easy. That's it. That's so done. No that's more it. rocks. No, no more rocks. <laughs> there you go. Nice and level. Bang done. Yes. How good is that? So good. Right. <laughs> it's time to get stuck into some coconut mojitos. Benny, you missed out on this one. Unlucky, mate. Are you gutters? Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> We had pretty average weather the whole trip, but our little leprechaun brothers produce the goods with a dual rainbow. Enjoy these epic scenes. How bloody good was that campsite, eh? Mate, um, it was bloody great. Nice and close to the beach too, so um, no, no walking a mile. Yeah, normally when you get up to the zones three 
two and one there's just big sand dunes and you camp behind those dunes which is sort of good for shelter and stuff but yeah it doesn't beat this position here right on the water it's so good yeah and not even a far drive once you get um on the beach how about the fishing this morning though mate we absolutely nailed the fishing in effort i reckon we keep going down this way and seeing if we can see any gutters actually there is a really good one here Shall we give it a crack? Look at that. Let's give it a red hot crack. Looks like there's little tiddlers just swimming in the surf and smashing our bait. So we're just gonna keep on going and see if we can find a deeper gutter. Well, still no luck with any fish. There's just bloody tiddlers everywhere. So I reckon um, we just head straight up here to the little estuary passage here and um, go for a swim and see if we can actually catch something that is not a tiddler. Mate, the problem is we couldn't even catch a tiddler, but um, a for um, a for the for the effort. That's it. Let's keep going, eh? So we just came around this bend here, there was a bit of a, a ledge and I was a bit, a bit worried about the van, but anyway, we've got a bit of a situation. So we're just gonna give it a little bit of rooster, aren't you Greg? We've done ourselves a mischief, but um, <laughs> nothing the right boot can't fix. That's it. We'll also get the bags in the van raised up to the high mode and that, that might give them a bit more body clearance of the van anyway, so see how we go, eh? Give it a red yeah. hot crack. got stuck, a lot of weight, and a bit of a turn, so tried the max tracks, now we're doing this winching scenario, should be good. Okay, now swim. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We sweated lids. I know. <laughs> I'm keen for that ocean over there. Mate, um, so we pulled the anchor out. <laughs> so, um, Stack of max tracks under there. Seven, ton, seven ton of anchor. Yeah. And um, Maxi's in and out a few times. Winch. Yeah, on the hard stuff. Good communication. Yeah. Bang done. Happy days. By the looks of it, you guys were in for a pretty chill Davo, but what on earth happened? Well, I reckon if the Jeep Gladiator was towing the van, we wouldn't have got stuck. Ain't that right, Grego? But on a serious note, we didn't have the max tracks, the winch, and the raised height in the van, we wouldn't have got out. So that was, it did wonders. The handheld really comes into its own, allowing for awesome vantage points from around the van when adjusting with its massive retractable cable. You can literally walk up the sand dune and operate the van, it's that bloody big. That's a wrap guys, hope you enjoyed watching this episode. There's plenty more to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time on Bag Builds.